So just step back. So that was the, the screen I was talking to, uh, which is talking that the, the problem statement, which is the impact that COVID can have. But I think the opportunity in terms of businesses' ability to capitalize on new business models and taking advantage of this opportunity, otherwise you may get disrupted. And so I've put down a sort of a brain dump. I've just some, some high level thoughts around opportunities that are presenting themselves. And I'll come back to this, this particular slide in a few moments. But what I, what I see are that the, the headings as they relate to the business Caltech, and Caltech is focused on the property and infrastructure technology space, which is a rapidly growing space uh, globally. Uh, we as Caltech uh, are now operating in the Middle East, in India, in Latin America, with teams working on major projects in those marketplaces. But what I'm gonna focus on here is how we've looked at pivoting some of the solutions that we've been deploying to address a COVID-19 challenge. And as I look around and just make sure you can, you can see that this slide, it's uh, sort of a simple mind map. What I have when you, when you think about the challenges we're all facing right now and we've just experienced is uh, one example is bandwidth. We've seen a 35% growth in bandwidth over the last week. That is the amount of internet traffic, I suppose in simple terms being consumed. We are seeing a growth and proliferation in number of connected devices at home. Um, what does that mean in terms of opportunities, in terms of developers, in terms of uh, risk profile that was just talked about in terms of cybersecurity? What about uh, the types of environment that we employ or we provide to employees to work from home? Does everybody need a laptop or do we need a thin client? Um, what sort of access are we all working to these days? Uh, if we're working to the cloud, do we need a, a very powerful laptop? laptop? Uh, what about teamwork and collaboration? Uh, many of us have been using Microsoft Teams or Zoom, et cetera, to enable our, uh, our work schedule over the last number of weeks. We are seeing in the property technology space, uh, what was being deployed as a, a nice to have in terms of smart spaces, now becoming a critical component of property developers' mindset in terms of the types of technologies they deploy. How do you deploy air quality sensing, uh, smart washrooms, sensing for organic compounds in the air that might lead to a higher incidence or a worsened COVID-19 outcome? Um, what about supply chains? Uh, we've seen in a lot of the telecom sector, the supply chain has been so focused on China and consolidated in China that there have been shortages of key components in deploying technologies, whether they be standard fiber optic technologies or IoT devices. So there's questions there about the manufacturing, the supply chain, and uh, do we have a, a robust supply chain that, that can survive the next pandemic? So let me just come back to who we are uh, and give a foundation stone in terms of Caltech. As a business, we've, we are focused in the property and infrastructure technology space. And really, one phrase I use is uh, the buildings, the network is the building. Uh, when we think about smart cities at the core, at the heart of these, the DNA of smart cities typically is the building infrastructure. How well connected are these building environments? And we've been focused and specializing in this um, now uh, for a number of years. And um, particularly now at an international level, working on projects, major smart cities, smart property projects in key cities around the world. Uh, one area that's been resonating strongly is the emergence of the bill to rent or property as a service uh, sector. Um, as a certain demographic is now consuming property much more as a service and far less as an owned asset. Our role in this is design, connect and manage. And in that context, we take a vendor agnostic approach we look at the best in class technologies um, that can be deployed into large scale property developments and how those technology deployments can assist in a number of areas, whether that be um, the building quality, the connectivity within those buildings, smart parking, uh, street lighting, environmental sensing, a range of smart campus, smart city type solutions. These have developed on into what we call digital twins, which is understanding the virtual or the network architecture in a building that allows us to start monitoring many, many components of the built environment. And of course, in this COVID-19 world, what we're seeing is there are a number of contributory factors that worsen a pandemic, which could be, for example, poor air quality 
or very close proximity of people. So when we talk about social distancing, but particularly uh, in studies which I'll come on to, um, we can see that uh, poor air quality leads to worse outcomes in terms of severity of pneumonia and uh, the higher severity of the overall COVID-19 um, symptoms. Deploying this technology initially was about how we can reduce um, tech energy consumption within buildings, how we allow, allow business uh, building owners, how we allow tenants, residents to control their own environment. But what we've seen is that this technology and the data flowing from this technology is allowing people to start analyzing the built environment and looking, looking for cause and effect are you seeing in an office space a higher level of outage employees being out sick because the air quality in that part of the building was poorer? And so this is where we start talking about um, the IoT opportunities in a post-COVID world, which is spinning a lot of these um, solutions that we've been you know, working with third parties internationally and saying, how can they be repurposed or re-envisioned to address a pandemic environment to preempt, to predict, to prevent uh, spread of disease. The background, background in terms of types of projects we have been working on, um, one of the, the showcase ones is in Wembley in London, uh, which is 8,200 uh, apartments. And these are all built to rent apartments. They are owned by one developer. They're rented. And our role within this environment, whether it's in the apartment or the public space, is the full technology solutions designer, the connector, the integrator, the operator. So we have a wealth of uh, technology expertise, but also a wealth of data to start looking at in a sort of contained smart city environment, uh, different parameters, different outcomes. And the question that we've not yet you know, really delved into is with all of that data, what learnings can we have around public health? This is what I said, this is in a post COVID-19 world is when you look at the wealth of data available to smart campus, smart building operators, what are the lessons we can learn? How can we feed this data into larger research projects to look at new outcomes, new solutions? The same applies in the Middle East where we are active in the King Abdullah Financial District. Um, our role here is in retrofitting what was commercial buildings to make them into residential apartment complexes and the deployment of smart property technologies around this complex in Riyadh. So our backdrop uh, before we move into the high level view and my high level view of opportunities is that we come and I come from a space of technology whether that be for the likes of Yahoo and media with network appliance or sun microsystems in the software and hardware space and the big compute space into a telecoms background with the likes of uh, magnet networks and more recently into the business to take advantage of what I see as an exploding area uh, from a growth standpoint is in the property and infrastructure technology space. So to give you some sense again, I'm just gonna dro drop into some of the opportunities in a little bit more detail. And one of those is in the air quality. And this was a study, um, what you have here in, uh, in the LA Times, this was only a week or so ago, which is the impact of air pollution on the outcomes from coronavirus. And this is sort of very uh, clearly a very recent topic uh, and research topic around the, the, the linkage between outcomes and uh, air quality. And we've done some of our own research on the World Health Organization's statements about air quality. And when you think about it, you know, how do a lot of these diseases spread in particles from skin contact? And um, what we saw, and this isn't, this isn't how we started off in life. We were looking at best, sort of the better energy management, you know, in, in air conditioning systems and HVAC systems. But the law of unintended consequences, as we started to research this, we saw the impact on, on more, uh, some various medical studies, is that poor air quality led to poor outcomes. So looking back at some of the research um, and the impact of using sensors, IoT sensors in the HVAC system, we're saying, well, how could we pivot from energy management um, from sort of you know, a nice temperature in an office to understanding air quality? So we've been working with um, a third party who developed these sensors and the data analytics platform to start tracking air quality. 
and benchmarking that against the international air quality standards. And so on this particular slide, we just took a, an example of the office. This is an office, one of our offices in, uh, in London. And where the door was closed, because people have been working from, from home for the last week or two, uh, the top right hand side, you, you may, if you can't see this slide, is a purple haze in a meeting room. And that's showing a, a, uh, a score in that room, an air quality score of 218. That level of air quality will start to give you headaches and make you feel sick. Now, you start to look at the performance of a building and the health of employees. What we have now been talking to is uh, the authorities in the Middle East, in and Dubai, and in Saudi Arabia with my teams down there, uh, as part of an overall Ministry of Communication and Information Technology in, in Saudi, is can we repurpose this technology into hospitals, into a built environment, into nursing homes? And how can we develop, enhance this technology? So what started off as a platform to measure, you know, is this a nice office space to work, has now developed into something far more um, important in terms of sensing air quality. The next slide down, for example, is us measuring a building in, in Dubai. Um, so what we have is a platform that started off as air quality, temperature and humidity in an office to a platform that at the moment can sense about 220 organic compounds in the air and report that back real time in a cloud-based environment to a mobile phone, to a desktop. So, the, so the, the, the opportunity is with the technologies and the data flow is can you now, looking back, can you correlate building air quality with the incidence of illness and sickness in that building? as we think about developing this kind of technology uh, moving forward. Another e example, um, this was something I thought about and I have my own of a Garmin watch, sports watch. And I looked, um, when you think about the wearables, and I go back to my mind map, and one of the points here is um, wearable technology and how that technology can, can assist people in terms of their fitness, et cetera. But also there has been talk over time about how you can help people live um, in, an, in an assisted living environment at home, or they don't need to be in a hospital. And I thought about one of the symptoms in, of the COVID-19 is the persistent cough. And I did a quick search online to look for a solution. And this was the one that appeared at the top of a Google search. Um, not exactly the most sophisticated cough sensor, but I thought for the people on this call, I'm sure there are those out there with access to accelerometers, um, you know, precision measurement sensors who could possibly look at developing a sensor wearable, which looks at coughs and severity and repetition of coughs, um, particularly in the elderly. Um, could you develop some technology which is a wearable around the neck or something? I couldn't find any technology, but it's something that has been asked again for us in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, where the Saudi ministry, the MCIT and the Ministry of Health have asked, do we have wearable technology solutions as Caltech or do we have access to technology or developers who can bring these type of solutions to the table? And uh, I thought knowing people like Tau Glass and other great companies, there are surely solutions out there which could be deployed into the health system as a wearable for vulnerable people. Um, so can we pull them into the health system before the symptoms get any worse? Um, so that's an, an example of uh, an IoT opportunity I could see. The next slide, um, looking at uh, large crowds. Um, this was a, on the right hand side, is a almost like a greenhouse with UV lamps in it, uh, deployed at one Thai university to try and disinfect people. Now if you want to get disinfected, you need to stand in front of a, a basically a sunbed for a while before it uh, it'll kill the coronavirus. But when you have large scale events like we have in Wembley, uh, around Wembley Stadium, or you think about the European soccer championships that were unfortunately postponed, are there technology solutions? Can we develop technology solutions that um, could disinfect large crowds? Um, I don't have the answer, but clearly people are thinking of ways, innovative ways, and we're only at the start of it, where is there some light frequency? Is there something else where you could look to disinfect large crowds where you have clearly great challenges or an impossible issue of social distancing? Um, 
Moving on to others, I mean, we've seen in Singapore, we've seen Japan, Israel using mobile data to track COVID-19 cases and alerting you from a proximity perspective that you have been within contact touching distance of somebody who was a confirmed case. Now, there are a raft of ethical issues, uh, tracking issues there. But on the right-hand side, those that heat map on this particular slide shows you um, different fan groups, Chelsea and Arsenal fans outside Wembley Stadium. They're not actively logging on to a network. This is passively tracking the MAC address of their device, their phone, and seeing where they cluster. Um, which then leads you into, well, if you can do that level of technology, there's another company which, if you're trying to identify out of that large group, then a super spreader. So one individual who's been identified as having a particular disease or is spreading a disease recklessly, there is technology that allows you to zoom in on particular shops and look for one individual at a specific point in time, either male or female or wearing a blue top. Um, again, the, the idea of this particular heat mapping technology was looking for um, uh, theft in stores and trying to play back um, who was at a particular part of the store where the item was stolen. Now we're being asked, can this technology be repurposed if you can identify a particular individual as a known COVID carrier or subsequent pandemic type disease carrier, that they could be tracked all the way through a particular complex, whether that's a building, whether it's a shopping center. Um, so again, this, these are the questions now being asked of us very early on in the cycle. Um, this is a particular solution we are hoping to deploy in Riyadh, which is a smart washroom. Um, and uh, this is a layer, this is just the architecture, but the technology is being deployed um, primarily contactless in terms of hand washing, the toilets, um, it's looking for, it'll sense high levels of ammonia in the air, it looks for the utilization of, of the bathrooms in a building. And so trying to better plan for the cleaning and hygiene of toilet, bathroom, washroom facilities throughout a very large campus facility for approximately 15,000 employees. So how do, you may, how do you maintain when you combine air quality, bathroom uh, hygiene, et cetera, in a building, a very, you know, very clean operating environment for employees to, or residents or tenants to live and work in. Um, another point I made in that uh, mind map was supply chain. And what we've seen is in the supply chain, the challenges of a very focused supply chain in China. Um, one of the main uh, sources of telecommunications equipment is China. And what we've seen is a short, uh, a significant shortage of very basic but fundamentally critical technology uh, in telecom network deployment, which are fiber optic enclosures. We have now patented and registered a number of, uh, number of patents over the last few weeks to manufacture our own devices. We've recognized that some of our projects, and these are big projects in South America, in Brazil, et cetera, will suffer from component shortage coming out of China. So we've had to set up a, a separate division to look at this. So, I mean, that's a, that's a huge challenge um, for companies, but it's also an opportunity to look at how we can innovate um, on, on a, and from, a, uh, from an IP perspective and a manufacturing perspective, this will be contract manufactured for us, but it gives us supply chain assurance outside of a reliance on China. Um, one other topic I mentioned in the, uh, the, the mind map was around um, working from home. We're all in this work from home environment and you're seeing the evolution and rapid development of well-being. Companies focused on well-being of employees at home this particular company, Brave, is one of those that's been noted as coming out of the coming out of stealth mode rather rapidly, because as people are confined to home, families are combined, confined to home, uh, and um, you know people are missing out on just regular well-being activities and interaction. You're seeing a growth in d d companies looking to solve for this in a digital way, public health, mental health at scale, but addressed in a digital context. So, so conscious of time, and what I've been showing you is uh, us as a company, we're focused on property and infrastructure technology. 
what we've been seeing and experiencing the last four weeks has been a request to evolve that technology to see how it can be purposed to address the current COVID issue. But actually in places like Saudi, they're now thinking about the post COVID world. How can these technologies be used to minimize, prevent, et cetera, a reoccurrence of this economic shutdown? And so I see that as a significant opportunity to disrupt how we do business, how we use technology and how we operate moving forward. Um, the final piece in all of this, of course, and this isn't necessarily our forte, but we look to work with partners in this space, and this is a Deloitte summary analysis, is when you have all of these uh, smart cities, smart building, prop tech solutions, they are really only of benefit in this COVID type or pandemic type world if you link them to a public health data architecture where you can correlate the data, where you can correlate challenges of social distancing, where you can think about, um, you know, you have clusters of people catching a COVID-19 because guess what? They all rented a, a, an e-bike or an Uber scooter in Sao Paulo from a particular area. You know, we haven't been, you know, keeping these, these devices clean, hygiene, etc. But having these items as standalone, that's all they will be, as standalone solutions. The power really is in big data and bringing it all together. So um, that's where I'll stop. Uh, that was just a whistle stop tour. Hopefully it provokes some thoughts and some ideas um, about IoT. And that's it from me.